Hello, beautiful earthling. I am so grateful that we can come together at this moment in time and share some energy, share some wisdom. I'm really excited to open up this conversation about sex and sexuality and masturbation and spirituality and how everything just intertwines because everything is so intricately connected. I have really been so connected to my sexual energy lately and it has been such a source of strength and healing for me and empowerment lately and connection to my body especially in these winter months of new york where there can be three days in a row where i don't see the sunlight and it's just really a great time for me to be anchoring into practices that make me feel so good and so aligned and feel safe and that fulfill me so that's what i've been doing and my sexual practice has definitely been one of those so i wanted to get into that and i'm going to answer some of your questions i like many people learned about sex through porn and through one sex ed class in I think it was fifth grade and then the next time I was ever spoken to about sex by an adult was when I was a senior in high school so that's a really big gap I never discussed sex or had a sex talk with my parents I feel like it is really important to have someone who you feel safe discussing sex with and that's kind of why I wanted to film this video because I know not everyone has an outlet or a safe space they can go to discuss these kinds of things or share stories or you know have a a safe outlet to learn about sex from because a lot of porn is just from the male perspective and is not an accurate representation of what sex is supposed to look like or feel like or you know doesn't show before sex or after sex or the giggles in between sex within me and my friend group we just always say that there's no such thing as TMI like we all just share our stories with each other and listen and respect and honor each other's you know um, experiences and learn from them. That's like the biggest thing that I can say about sharing stories, which is something we've been doing for so much of our human existence is sharing stories, sharing tales and fables to help each other learn. We can learn so much from each other if we opened up and allowed ourselves to be vulnerable and held in community or in in um, safe spaces. The first question, have you ever experienced the fear of sexual intimacy? If so, how did you overcome it? So I definitely had a long time period in my life where every time that I would have sex, I would get sad or I would even cry and tear up and sometimes like my partner would see this and we would stop or sometimes I just would hide it because I felt embarrassed that I was sad. This was a few years ago and like, three years ago. And I know that a lot of that was because I sexual traumas were coming up that I didn't even know were there, but basically the more that I have been learning about Tantra and studying with Tantra teachers, the cervix is kind of like the portal to the heart, if you will. So when it's being penetrated, if it's very painful, like, you know, all the way up there in your vagina, if that's very painful, a lot of Tantra teachers will tell you that it's because your heart is not open and you may not just be ready to receive like that kind of penetration. Anytime that we're having sex, it's such a high vibrational place where if there was sexual misconduct in the past, those memories can come back so much easier. It's such a sensual place and I think that sensual experiences can bring out memories, if that makes sense. Like when you smell something and you, you remember your ex-partner's cologne or deodorant and it brings back all these memories. I feel like it's the same thing with sex where like when you're having this intense orgasmic experience, suddenly you can just be hit with this very intense energy of guilt or shame or fear because of a past experience. I honestly had to take a break from sex. This is when I went celibate and then be very, very present with my sexual energy and not force it. And that's pretty much what I've been practicing now is like, if I don't feel like having sex or touching myself or, you know, I want to be sensual with someone but I don't want to be sexual with someone, then I fully honor that. And even if other people have pushed your boundaries and have not respected you and have been mean to you, you don't need to continue perpetuating that cycle or that narrative within yourself. So I have chosen to break those stories and when I don't want to have sex, I'm not going to force myself to. And if I want to be sensual with someone and like breathe with someone and eye gaze with someone and they think that it's leading somewhere, you know, further and I don't want that, then I, I just communicate it. And of course, just the, the mental conversations, instead of thinking that having sex makes me impure, I say, wow, this orgasm is like one of the purest, most high vibrational, sacred experiences that I can have and I'm so gonna honor it. And what a beautiful thing that I get to experience. Like, oh, I'm so grateful. So that all has really, really helped me. And when I am masturbating, cause I haven't had any sexual partners <laughs> recently, in case you needed to know, um, because I've been kind of getting out of a relationship, I just fully felt like 
I don't want to share that energy with anyone right now. I just want to love myself and have my own sexual practice. So what that has looked like is one, using my yoni egg and two, just being so present every, every breath within my <laughs> masturbation. This sounds, I haven't talked about this kind of stuff so openly on the internet in a while, but yeah, just being present with whatever comes up. Like maybe I will get sad when I'm masturbating like for like a minute or two and I'll just breathe into that. <sighs> I release that story or like I'm going to move through that and having intentions with my orgasm. So this might sound kind of strange, but it's something that I've been doing for about a year and has helped me heal so much. So before I get to that place, I set an intention for what I want to bring in with this orgasm, which when I orgasm, it just feels like this very high vibrational energy. I just become fully vibration. Like my body disappears, my name disappears. I see colors, like I literally see rainbows sometimes when I'm coming. And so I'm like, wow, this is really powerful. I should channel something into this. And I posted something on my Instagram that was like orgasms to move stagnant energy, orgasms for healing and a few other things. And I truly resonate with that. And this is how I put that into practice is like I will set an intention for that beautiful place that I arrive at. I started doing this because I was sad when I was having sex and I was like how do I change this you know just inquiring which I think is a great thing to do within our minds is just ask questions like oh why is that there how can I shift this experience and so I asked myself that and I was like well, let's see if you can mentally change the experience of your orgasm. So I was like, I want to bring in so much love and laughter and joy with my orgasm. And then I came and I could not stop laughing. Like I was so happy and my heart just felt so open. Like I had like unlocked some inner key that I forgot about or that, yeah, I just had to remember was there and I just felt so light after. And I was like, wow, the power of the mind. Like once again, I am revealed this sacred temple called the mind and the thoughts that enter within it like wow they create miracles i just felt so light and so healed and now every time that i come or have a sexual exchange with someone i set an intention for my orgasm so sometimes it can be healing sometimes it can be release sometimes it can just be like empowerment sometimes it can be strength it can be laughter joy just love and it really unfolds in that way just by setting the intention intentions are so powerful they basically guide our energy constantly whether we know it or not being present throughout every part of your love making too like not just when you masturbate i feel like sometimes it can be easier to be present with yourself while you're masturbating because you're not like thinking about anyone else's pleasure um or what you may look like or you're not so much in your head about what you're doing basically you can go so much deeper when you are present within every second of having sex with someone and not just worrying about coming every two seconds or just pleasing them so how i like to do this is connecting my breath with the person that i'm having sex with and you don't have to say like let's connect our breath you can just guide it and let it happen and find each other's rhythm and starting out with being sensual with someone really helps so starting out with just stroking or massaging or kissing caressing that's so sensual or eye gazing you know or singing together all those things are very sensual experiences will immediately drop you into this subtle like undercurrent of your sexuality and of inner excitement that i feel like is always kind of there waiting to be awakened it's kind of like this kundalini fiery energy in your sex organs that like ooh, just wants to be activated not not rushing any part of the experience i guess if it's a quickie like go for it get your get your o and i think that's what makes someone also the most attractive to me sexually is when someone is so present and grounded in whatever they're experiencing in the moment when you're with someone who is so committed to their own inner growth and evolution and self-knowledge when they are so full on their own and then you come into bed with a person like that you just feel like you're both charging each other up even more and that it's this even exchange and balance and someone's like meeting you with the same energy that you're at but yeah it just it makes things last longer it makes things more pleasurable and this is basically the yoni egg practice is you don't need a yoni egg a yoni egg by the way is like a little egg mine is charging on my little altar but um that's usually made out of a crystal in the shape of an egg and a lot of people when i first tell them about this are like won't it get stuck up there and i'm just like no it's not gonna get stuck, um, but it's basically just a tool that you can use to 
kind of awaken and activate your inner vagina muscles that you may not even be used to using. Basically meant to help you strengthen your pelvic floor and it's kind of like doing kegels but with a little egg in there and help you to kind of learn a new way to orgasm which is like the vaginal orgasm if you're not already doing that and you can connect your yoni muscles with your breath. So when I'm using my yoni egg, I am lying down, my hands are on my pelvis, I'm massaging my ovaries and I'm inhaling and squeezing my vagina, feeling the energy rise up my spine and come back down as I release my vagina and feel the energy kind of loop and replenish me. That's called the microcosmic orbit. Um, it's a Taoist practice. It's rooted in Taoism. And Jing energy is this sexual energy which carries, you know, basically the keys to life is full of vibrant energy because it is meant to bring in life. So instead of releasing this energy out, the microcosmic orbit is meant to help us replenish with our own Jing energy and circulate it back into ourselves. So inhaling, squeezing and letting the energy rise up, exhaling, releasing. You can even like push outward with your vagina and feel the energy come back down to your navel space and that is such a beautiful practice. It helps me be present within my own body and with whatever traumas may come up, whatever emotions may come up while I'm like having this yoni egg inside of me. And you don't need a yoni egg to do that. You can do these practices. You can re-explore your vagina without a yoni egg. Masturbating has really helped me feel so empowered and has definitely helped me feel more safe when I do have sexual interactions with other people because I'm so used to honoring my body that when other people don't, I I know it's not right and I, like, I immediately know to stand up for myself or to voice it because I have formed a habit to only have loving connections within myself and within my sexuality. It's a way to worship myself. I really like that word worship, like worshiping at our own altars. Something that my friend said that I think I mentioned in a previous vlog was that we should be making love to ourselves the way that we want someone else to make love to ourselves. And this was another question I got also on Instagram. Do you masturbate when you're bored? I only masturbate when I feel horny and when I feel so sensual within my body and I just want to touch myself. I don't masturbate as a way to like pass the time or a way to make me feel good when I feel shitty. That's just me. I think that it's so fine if you do, but when I do, I really make it like a whole ritual and I'll light candles and I'll rub myself with oil and I'll like be fresh out of the shower and sometimes I won't but um, it's really nice to make it really special every time because that's how I want to feel having sex with someone else unless it's like a really raunchy like kinky spur of the moment thing that's really great too and that's like special in its own way I really honor my orgasm for everything that it can allow me to bring in and everything that it can allow me to release no orgasm is wrong no feelings or emotions that come up when you are having an orgasm are wrong but just be present with them and inquire how they make you feel you know I used to masturbate when I was bored or sad but then I would feel even more sad after and like kind of pathetic or kind of like icky afterwards and I think the reason I was feeling icky was because I wasn't honoring my body like I was forcing an orgasm out of myself that I didn't want to have just because I was sad I wanted to feel good for like you know a few minutes so um, that's why I, I kind of stopped doing that. Do you have any tips on getting comfortable in your own body? Like I just said, masturbation is one of them. Being naked with myself is one of them. Being kind <laughs> within my mind to my body is one of them. Spending time naked with other people who have all different body types. When you love someone unconditionally, you're most likely not looking at their body at all or connecting their appearance to your depth of love for them. So that was something I started doing in high school was spending time naked with women. And I was like, oh, I cherish these women so deeply. And like, I find them so beautiful in every single way, like so unconditionally loving these girls for exactly what they looked like because I just saw their spirit and saw their spirit as this extremely attractive, beautiful, powerful thing. And that made me realize that I could have that same energy and acknowledgement toward myself. And that just changed everything for me. And that's when I really just started basically becoming a nudist and spending time naked with people and in nature all the time. So just try it out if that feels safe for you. How do you feel comfortable with people or know for sure that they're not using you? I always ask myself how I feel after hanging out with someone new or for the first few times. Like I just check in. Do I feel drained? Do I feel inspired and empowered? Do I feel energetically exhausted? And beyond that, you can ask someone, what are your intentions? It's really actually a beautiful question to ask someone like, 
what do you wish to learn from me? What do you wish to share? I think that everyone is using everyone in some way. It's just if you're okay with the way that you're being used for comfort or for companionship or to be a mirror to someone else. You know, I think that we're all exchanging something from each other and we all connect with people because something resonates and we feel full on some level, um, whether that's mutual or not. I do think that in a way we're all using each other, which when it's mutual is so beautiful and so fulfilling. But even when someone states their intentions with you, I think only time and actions will really back up the integrity of their words. So just give it time, give it space and don't kid yourself. After that, honey, just trust your intuition. Oh, please trust your intuition because intuition doesn't lie. And I feel like the more that we neglect our intuition, the quieter it speaks. And the more that we listen to it and connect to it, the louder it speaks and the more on point it is. How do you have an orgasm during sex with a partner if you have only had orgasms while masturbating? I actually get that question a lot from people online and in my day-to-day -day life. And I think that for a lot of people with a vagina, it can take a little bit more time to reach that O, oh, you know? It takes a little bit more foreplay, a little bit more, more warming up, and another big thing is feeling comfortable and safe so that you're not in your head about orgasming. Anytime there's pressure for you to orgasm, I feel like it makes it 10 times harder for you to reach that place because you're not just feeling comfortable to explore what your body is feeling. You're just worried about what you look like or the fact that you have to get there now. So doing it with someone that you really feel comfortable with and make it fun, you know, you can make it kinky. Have them blindfold you and worship you and touch you, breathing into the pleasure that you're experiencing, whether it's like a kiss on the inner thigh or like a tug on the ear or their breath down your neck, like really feel into all those experiences because once you do, you start to feel like every moment of a sexual interaction is orgasmic but that really really helps and i think feeling feeling safe with someone is a really big part of it also if there's anything that you use like a vibrator or something that makes you come when you're on your own masturbating invite that into the bedroom with your partner and explore with that. I think it can be like really hot to do that. Don't be ashamed of not coming and don't feel pressured to come, but if it's something that you want with your partner, which I'm sure it is, just release any pressure to do so and just focus on enjoying every moment of it and having fun and feeling really safe with the person that you're having sex with. How to build the capacity to always remember to leave a situation you don't want to be in. So I'm really glad that someone asked this question because no matter how much I tell you or anyone tells you that your voice deserves to be heard and that your boundaries deserve to be respected, it's not going to fully resonate or change anything within you until you start building that habit of doing so, nurturing connections that do make you feel seen and respected and that your boundaries are honored. So you kind of have to like rebuild this neural pathway or this response to situations that don't feel good and eventually it will become a habit. Just really ask yourself, is this serving my highest good? Something that I really like that my friend told me was that if it's not a fuck yes, it's a fuck no. And that can be very extreme and not pertain to every situation, but I love asking myself that question because it makes the answer very black and white and my mind can't come up with like you know well I mean I could stay here even though I don't want to because my friends are here I told them I would be here I want to show up for them it's like no you don't feel comfortable here so leave if you don't absolutely want to spend your precious energy here then don't um <laughs> so that's an extreme way of doing it but I have found that really helpful because I need that extreme because it's very easy for me to justify reasons why I should stay in a situation that isn't the most comfortable for me to serve other people. The present moment is where everything exists and everything has the chance to be healed or provoked even more. Do you have sex or date people who aren't vegan? Yes, <laughs> I do. Um, or I have. What are your tips for intense orgasms through masturbation? I kind of already talked about it, just really being slow and taking your time. It's not really fun when someone just starts penetrating you really intensely and they haven't fully given you time to warm up or to get excited about that penetration or that touch and it just feels like really forced. The idea of that alone just really turns me off because you like to, you need to get the fire going a little bit and I think that's so important. So I really appreciate someone who can like warm things up a bit, get things going, but at the same time some of my like favorite sexual um, experiences have been very spontaneous and spur of the moment and just like I just look at someone and I'm like wet and um, things just unfold like in a very passionate raunchy way that's really nice too but for the most part like you got to give your girl some foreplay and so when you're masturbating and having your own practice do that for yourself you know give yourself a breast massage that's actually just really good for 
checking for breast cancer, for bringing chi energy to your boobs, for keeping them perky. But I really like to rub aloe vera on my boobs and just like massage in circles, massage up, down, like in and out. And it just helps circulate energy and oxygen through them. And the, the Taoist tradition says that it's chi energy just being unblocked and moved through. And it feels really good. And it kind of like opens up the heart, which will naturally open up the pussy, so um, that's what I do. And sorry if you get offended by the word pussy, I personally, I like that word, but whatever you wanna call it. Does size matter? Um, I don't think that size matters at all. It's more about how it is used. And also sometimes people with smaller penises actually hit the G spot even more. They have easier access to it because like, the length of their member is like touching that exact spot. As long as you know what you're doing with what you have, it should be fine. Thoughts on friends with benefits? I think that it can be great for some people. I just really struggle with that because I do normally get an emotional attachment to someone even if I don't want to date them. Like if I am coming with someone, there is some sacred bond, some imprinting that happens, some exchange, and I just form feelings. It's something that you have to be really present with when you're having friends with benefits is like state your intentions have open communication make sure you feel safe around this person to talk about when you want the relationship to be over or like maybe you feel jealous or maybe you have feelings just feeling really comfortable stating all those things that could happen along this friends with benefits relationship so that no one gets hurt that's just a really big thing but i'm still working on it. and i feel like i struggle sometimes still to say uh i like you or i'm jealous or i get nervous around you and so for that reason i'd rather not be in a friends with benefits relationship because i don't want to hurt anyone or get hurt myself how to start talking to your partner about maybe introducing sex toys or different moves etc so something that I think is fun is to go to a sex shop together or if you want to try different positions or something kinky or something different you can find a video online that you really like or that really turns you on and you can send it to your partner and be like this turns me on so much I want to do this with you or like I want you to touch me in this way that would be so hot I would come so hard from this like that really helps because it's not a face-to-face -face thing they have time to process it they have time to see it for themselves and most likely get turned on and Usually, I feel like if you're with someone who is on the same page as you, they'll be excited about pleasuring you and that is like a really easy way for them to know how to pleasure you. If they're seeing exactly what you want done to you, it's amazing and so I think that's a really good kind of technique or life hack with, you know, experimenting with new positions or new toys or whatever it may be. What are your views on period sex? So because I do feel really connected to the Taoist um, lineage and just beliefs on sexual energy, I try not to have sex on my period just because for anyone with a vagina when they're releasing the egg that is the greatest time of energetic loss of jing energy because it's like the life energy the source of life leaving the body if i'm horny on my period then i will do it but for the most part i just like to honor that time of release and death and shedding but i normally don't get horny on my period how to tap into your sexuality without a partner i find it extremely difficult to be aroused by myself so that's a really good question uh especially because i'm in the same boat not with a partner and make it less about yourself like forget about your own identity and this is where the meditation aspect comes in fantasize about someone else doing what you're doing to yourself like stroking caressing massaging yourself just get really sensual with it with the candles burning and don't make it about you where you don't have to look in the mirror or anything like that but just make it more all about sensation and less about things at the level of the mind because it is really nice to be able to pleasure yourself when you don't have someone in your life to do that and honestly i really think that reading erotic novels could be a good tip for you because they're less just intense than watching physical porn but they really describe in detail all the little things that are like happening within you when you're getting turned on or having sex. I know a lot of people who really resonate with written porn or lit erotica. I don't know exactly what it's called, but I would definitely try that out. What really gets your erotic energy flowing? How do you incorporate erotic energy in day-to-day -day life? This is a really good question because I think that everyone has different moments where they feel fully sexy. And one of those things for me is when I feel like I'm honoring all of my energy, like my creative energy, and I'm doing things that make me feel good and happy. Like I'm not forcing anything out of myself work-wise and I'm surrounding myself with people who fill me up all those external things 
just generally make me feel good and from that place when I take a shower in the morning and I lotionize my body I could just look at myself and feel so full of love because I know that I'm valued and appreciated for more than just my body and that I'm contributing in a way that goes beyond just my physical body and that is something that I really need to reinforce for myself and that's when I feel like so sexy because I feel like so spiritually attractive and open and aligned and I think anchoring into more presence throughout your day will help you just bring in that sensual energy because we are very sensual beings. We oh, are so blessed and lucky to have a sense of taste and smell and touch and sound. Like all these things are so exciting and can be great ways to get us out of our heads. And if we really tuned into every little sensation that we were feeling, like it would probably be overwhelmingly exciting. So I try to do that throughout the day as much as possible and then I just channel it into creation because sexual energy is creative energy and so I just like move it forward and I let it inspire me and invigorate me. And all these things that I'm sharing, truly just experiment with them within yourself and see how they feel so that you can have the physical experience of it rather than just have this mental awareness or you know receiving of information allow yourself to experience these things if you are so inclined how to explain to your partner what you like slash feels good if what they're doing isn't pleasurable i honestly think that you shouldn't be having sex with people that you don't feel comfortable speaking to and this is coming from someone who has for most of my life been an introvert i really learned that if i can't state my boundaries or tell someone what i don't like that they're doing then i should not be having sex with them because that's just not safe for me and if i'm not at a place where i can communicate how i actually feel then like that's just dangerous and i don't want to feel any kind of way after if it's something that's really sensitive like they're not doing something enough of that you like i always think just messaging them is a better way to do it because it's less embarrassing for both of you they have more time to process what you're saying you can use kinder words instead of sometimes when you say things in the moment like that doesn't feel good or like can you go longer or whatever it is that you need to say um it just might not come out the way that you want it to because you might force it out and it'll come out more abruptly or uh just saying those things like when the lights are off and you're just lying in bed together and instead of saying a negative version of i wish that you did that more you could be like i love it when you touch me like this and i just want you to do it so much more and you don't have to do so much of x and y but do more of z because that just gets me so wet and you can say something that makes them feel more excited to pleasure you rather than like they're doing something wrong if that makes sense just be safe <laughs> energetically i answered quite a few questions or maybe not even that many but i just ended up rambling for quite a while so i hope that maybe you received something from this video that felt valuable and that you keep honoring whatever part of your journey that you're on sexually because it is a very tender place and a sacred place and a vulnerable place when you are sharing your body and your orgasm with someone. So I hope that you can keep honoring that and honoring the vessel that you are, the temple that you are for your beautiful spirit. Even though it can be scary and you might not feel worthy, like keep, keep empowering yourself and rewriting those thoughts every time they come up with something positive. You are so worthy of feeling good and you are so worthy of feeling pleasure. So if you would like to share any tips or any lessons that you've learned along your path that have really helped you feel more comfortable in your own sexuality or expression or anything along the lines of what i covered in this video please leave it down below let's keep sharing our stories and being liberated from them and learning from each other i'm so grateful for that and i'm so grateful to share this space with each other thank you so much and i'll see you in a video soon bye